Well, hello, it is fall and today we're gonna to be doing a really cute mouse and some fall leaves with watercolor. Hi, I'm Viv, welcome to Viv's Art. Let's go paint, come on. All right, I have my little mouse sketched out with a few leaves around him. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead, get some clean water, wet that background, and to decide on what a good fall color scheme would be, you can use the colors of your choice. I'm using some oranges, some roses, olive greens, a little yellow, maybe some burnt orange in there, some brown maybe, whatever you feel like would be a nice, background. Now this is the wet on wet technique where you wet the paper first and just drop the colors in. So let that water do the work for you. You um, pick some beautiful fall colors, drop those in and just see what happens. Now I'm going to let you watch and I will be back shortly. Now I've almost finished with the background, but I want to make that background bring it down under some of those leaves. And so I am painting in between and under those. I'm not using the wet on wet technique there. I'm just putting the paint down first and then just coming back and sort of charging other colors into it. So I'm gonna get that, um, that under, you know, on the, the, the floor of the forest, we're gonna get some of that painted in. I'm also deciding that in some spots, I'm just gonna add a little bit of color. I'm just kind of perfecting it. I wanna add a few dark colors, so I'm actually using a little bit of burnt orange and just dropping it in so that I'll have a little contrast. I want a little bit more contrast than what I have in this first layer. And then once I get that exactly how I like it, and get all the, the little underpainting and maybe some little shadows. You know, I'm putting some of that darker color where I want shadows or where I want it to be darker. Then I'm going to let this dry and move on to the next step. Now make sure that you let it dry. Once it's dry completely, I am gonna come back in here and I am mixing up a little bit of um, sepia or either you can use a brown and blue mixture I'm trying to go for a black but not a, I don't want a black straight out of the tube because we're gonna paint his cute little eyes and so I've, I've started with a little bit of sepia a little bit of blue mixed in and I am painting in his little eyes I'm making sure that I leave some of the paper white some of it dry so that he can have some nice little highlights in his eyes you know, that's what really brightens up the eyes and gives it its life is those tiny little highlights. And so I am using a number two and I'm using um, Creative Mark is the brand and it's called Mimic Squirrel, Mimic Faux Squirrel Watercolor Brushes. I'm using a number two pointed round just in case you're curious. And I'm just getting those little eyes in there. Um, trying to be really careful not to paint over the highlights getting the shape just right and really really paying attention to my reference photo to get those right now i've got a little bit of rose a little pinky rose color and i'm just going to do his cute little nose i'm adding a touch of orange that orange will make it look a little more flesh like and not quite so pink and his little mouth has a little pink, little pink undertone on it. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do that little part where his, the top parts of his mouth meet. Now I am taking a little bit of gray and uh, the way that I got that gray is I just took some in a little bit of sepia and I've added a little bit more like of an indigo blue to it. And I'm just 
making sort of texture marks, little hair marks. And I'm going in where it's going to be the darkest, where there's some shadows, where I see shadows on the reference. Putting those in first, but then taking some clean water and just blending those out. And pulling it out, making sure that it has that little furry texture that I want. Now I'm going along the very edges of his, it's not exactly his cheek, but the very edges of his head. And going out into the background with some of those little tick marks, those little, those little hair lines. And now I just wet the top part of his nose and taking some of that gray mixture and putting it right across his little nosy. And we're, I'm just really starting to put in some shadows. I want to start building up the shadows. I want to get those in place first and then we'll come back. We'll deepen the shadows, but we'll also have reference to the light areas. We can kind of see how much darker, once we start painting the lighter areas, that'll inform us on how dark we need to go in the shadow areas. So I like to start working and getting shadows in first and then a little bit of light. I know you're supposed to work light from dark with watercolor, but sometimes we have to break the rules. Well, we don't have to, but sometimes I like to break the rules. I've painted with watercolor enough that I feel like I can break some of the rules. So now I have got more of a brown mixture and we're going right over the little cap of his head. He is just the cutest little mouse. I love mice. And blending that in, putting the shadows just around his eyes, paying really close attention to the shapes of those shadows where they are on the actual mouse you know on the reference photo because we're trying to get them in the you know the right place and the right value and value is just how light or dark a paint color is and trying to get them in the right spot the right shape the right value now i've wet that down right across his nose and then i added a little bit more of the brownish gray and then I'm just blending it out with my paintbrush. It's, there's not a lot of hard work to this. It's just kind of, um, you want to take your time with it. Because again, even though I put some of the darker shadows in, I haven't made them as dark as they need to be. I just wanted to place them so I'll have a, like a jumping off point. So you don't want to go dark too fast in your lighter areas because you can always go darker in your darker areas. So I hope that makes sense. What I'm trying to say is even though I've marked out some of the shadows, I didn't go as dark as I could. But when I'm going into my lighter areas, I'm being very, very careful not to go too dark too fast because I know that I can always make my shadow areas darker. But once, if I get my light areas too dark too fast, I, I can lighten them, but I run the risk of ruining my paper. So be really careful. Just map out where your light areas are, where your dark areas are. When you're in your lightest areas, be very careful. Start off very light because you can always build it up and go dark. When you're in the shadow areas, you can start off kind of mid-tone and get those darker as well. So. Those are the two, the two areas I really find myself paying the most attention to. The really lightest lights and the darkest darks, and then everything else will come together in the middle. In, in my way of painting anyway, the way that my mind works. So I am just keeping on adding some shadows and I'm going between the grays and the brownish grays. And just putting those little shadows in, going around his cute little hands or do mice have hands? They're his cute little paws. He's got some paws. And I'm just really working on those shadows, trying to build up the color and get it just right. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss a thing. Now I'm just beginning to sort of paint in the very base layers, the very first layers of some of the leaves that are around the little, the little mouse. And I'm using some bright oranges, some, some really nice vibrant oranges, some of those pinks, some a little bit of yellow to really make the orange brighten up more of a yellow orange. I want um, them to sort of like surround him 
and just uh, what am I trying to draw attention to him but also sort of frame him put it that way I want it I want these leaves to sort of frame him draw attention to the foreground so that you're looking from the foreground up to him and then off to the background now I've gotten a really deep orange here that I'm putting onto this one and as you see each one of the leaves is just a little bit of a different variation of orange of course you could use greens you could use like those deep mahoganies or deep reds really rich burgundies use whatever colors that you like it's your painting after all I'm just using these these I wanted to try out I'm also using a little bit of olive green a little bit of green gold a little bit of those deep rich reds and maroons so I'm, I'm trying to use a variety of colors but I'm keeping it in the green and red orange range but you can you can do as you would like now once you get that down you let that dry completely that's very important let each one of these layers dry now the leaves have dried so I'm not gonna smear them as I reach over and work on his little face I'm putting in his nostrils with a little bit of a darker a darker color there of that reddish pinkish color that we painted on you know the first layer of his nose with now I'm getting and mixing a little bit of dark a little bit of brown and blue mixture going right back around his eyes starting to define those a little bit more and I have switched to my low Cornell ultra pointed round number two brush it has it these brushes do some really really fine detail it's like they almost have one hair at the tip they, they have more than one hair but it feels it's the the fine crisp lines that they give I just love to do fur with those the fur detail problem is I cannot find these brushes anywhere and I have used them for years and now I just I cannot find them but I'm trying to make this one last as long as possible because I really like the fine detail that it gives so now I'm just sort of painting in little little hairlines little tiny hairs I'm remembering where the shadow is darker to put those hairs closer together where the area of the fur is lighter I'm putting them further apart also another way you can do that is you can add a little bit more water to the mixture so that the actual paint is a little bit lighter as well all you know so those are some tricks for light and dark fur paint for darker just make the paint actually darker paint the little fur lines closer together if you want it lighter make the paint mixture a little paler by adding a little bit more water and painting those fur lines a little further apart so I'm really working on that little cap that he's sort he sort of looks like he has a little cap on his head that little dark marking of fur and then coming around to his nose I'm beginning to also define those shadows getting those a little deeper getting some little fur marks in there so that it gives them a little bit of texture I'm going to let you watch and just keep those things in mind about lights and darks and either changing the color of your paint your, the lightness or darkness of your paint or painting closer together those little fur lines or further apart so I'm gonna let you watch enjoy a little bit of music and I will be back in just a short second
So I've added some more shadows in there. You see the texture work that I've done by just drawing those tiny little hair lines in there. I'm also adding some of the different colors of paint with my larger brush and just blending it out with clear water. Now I'm coming back to the background. I'm gonna do another layer on that. And as I'm doing this layer, I'm doing sort of a negative painting technique where I am just painting the background around the leaves that are back there. You see, as I paint, the shapes of those leaves are starting to come forward. You can see those leaves. If you need to, before you start this layer, go ahead and sketch some leaves back there if you didn't in the beginning so that you'll have a guideline. Just do it very lightly so that your watercolor will cover it up. So, I mean, really lightly. Or you can do like I'm doing and just use your imagination and what you think the leaves might look like back there. That's all I'm doing is I'm just painting out, uh, painting around colors and trying to paint around it in the shape of a leaf so that it looks like a shape of the leaf. I'm also adding some darker browns back there to sort of look like the really dark shadows. You wanna have some contrast. You don't want the background to be all one value. You wanna have some really light light, some darker dark, some mid-tones. So I'm putting those in there as well. And again, I'm adding some deeper, deeper colors. I've added less water to this to this mixture of paint and I did not wet the background first. I'm painting wet on dry. The paint is wet, the background is dry because I wanna have a little bit more control of where the paint goes and I don't want it to blend as readily because what I'm trying to do is really just um, show the leaves, just get a nice pattern of leaves back there behind him. So that's what we're doing now. I'm gonna let you watch a little bit now what I'm doing right here is I'm just taking some clean water and I am just going over his little face. What that does is it blends out some of that fur texture, softens it up so it's not sitting right on top of the paper and it, and it smooths it out. Just be sure that before you put that clear water over it that it is completely dry. If you don't, it's going to bleed and you're going to mess up all that hard work you did in the, in the other layer that we just finished. So just be really, really careful of that. So now I'm just using a small stiff scrubber brush. It's a bristle brush and some of the areas I got a little happy with. I feel like I got too much paint in there. I want to lighten it up, give it some contrast. So I'm just taking my scrubber brush and scrubbing some of those areas out to lighten them up before I go any further. And, and I'm just, and I'm also paying attention to my reference photo to see where the really, really light areas are. And um, if you are really careful at the beginning, you won't have to scrub it out because you won't go dark too fast. But sometimes I go dark too fast. It's okay, it's, I'm only human, it's just a painting. And that's why we have scrubber brushes. So don't get you, don't get down on yourself if you have to scrub some out a little bit like I did. Perfectly normal. You're still doing a great job. Just keep at it. Painting is for enjoyment. It is your expression and no one else's. And you find your style, what works for you, and don't worry about everyone else. That's what I've done, and I'm hoping that's what you will do. So I'm still scrubbing some areas out because I get a little fussy with, with things sometimes. And it would have been fine without scrubbing it out, but I do think it gives it a better dimension. So I'm just gonna scrub a little bit and then I'm gonna let you watch and listen and I will come back to you shortly.
so I've gone back in into the background and added some even darker colors in some areas to really really have some good contrast and I've used a lot of um, browns some brown colors to do that a little bit of deep reds mixed with brown so I really like what I have now so I'm going to go ahead and start just doing some textures on top of the leaves so I'm just doing some shadows here and there doing a little bit of line works just to give the indication of some veins in the leaves right along some of those areas I'm adding a little bit more red some of the areas some of the are just a little orange I want some different variations of color in there and you see I've let the veins stay light while I've painted sort of around those I've let the edges of the leaves stay really light colored so that it gives it some nice contrast so I'm gonna work on the next leaf that one I want to be more red so of course I'm using a little bit more yet reds and while that yellow leaf was just still a tiny bit wet I dropped a little bit of those reds in too that way we have some unity you know the colors will be unified it won't look like a leaf over there all by itself being yellow it'll still have some of those reds in it and I'm just adding texture to the leaves indicating the veins and the textures and I'm also doing this wet on dry the paper is completely dry and I'm just painting right straight onto that dry paper and just really trying to give it some nice texture and build that color up now in the darker areas there I'm going with a really deep maroonish red I think it's a nice contrast really pretty I'm gonna take that same sort of maroonish red and do a little bit of texture work on this curled up leaf that is hiding under the yellow leaf and it's really a matter of what you how you want your leaves to look um, I did have a reference photo but I just kind of went rogue on some of these leaves because I didn't want them to be as detailed I didn't want them to distract so much attention away from my cute little mouse I just love my little mouse so I didn't want them to be overly detailed but yet they still needed some detail so I'm trying to keep it to where they're not it as detailed as the mouses they don't have as much texture and as much contrast so that's my thinking there of course it's your painting you do it the way you want to do it and in some of the areas I'm darkening it up adding some contrast this this leaf right here is going like straight across the plane of the picture it's one big fat leaf that has rose up so I'm just adding some yellows and some olive greens in there just to give it some you know a little variation make it exciting there since it's decided it's going to cover up that part of my paper and coming back in with some darker color for the shadows for the shadows around those leaves on the ground we want that ground to be darker because of course it's harder for the light to penetrate down there harder for the Sun to penetrate down there so now what I've done is I've decided I'm gonna take my paint pen and it is I don't even know the name of it it's just a white paint pen I'm gonna lighting lighten up some of those highlights I'm also gonna do his whiskers I tried to do his whiskers a little bit earlier they didn't, didn't show up as as well but I am going to use my white paint pen to add some highlights on his fur, highlights in his eyes, on his little pink nose, put a little bit of highlight there. You could also use a fine tip brush and some gouache. You don't have to use a paint pen if you don't have one. Actually, I think this is a white jelly pen, gel pen. So you do whatever you use whatever you have you don't this step is not a hundred percent necessary I'm just doing it sort of experimenting because I want to see how it's gonna look and so far I'm really pleased now I'm getting those I'm getting those whiskers going my paint pen is finally going now you can see those whiskers coming out from his cute little nose you can almost see them twitching little twitchy whiskers that's what we should name him twitchy whiskers so I'm getting those whiskers in there, getting the highlights around his body, in his eyes, on his little pink nose, getting in his whiskers, those beautiful long white whiskers, and pulling them out onto that colorful background where they really pop out. 
And really this is just at your own discretion where you would like to put it. I'm putting it where I think some light would be shining and hitting off of his fur and really sort of gleaming. Oh, twitcher whiskers, twitchy whiskers. That's what we name him. And I might, might have want, you know, just a little overboard with all the little white markings, all the little white lines, but hey, you paint and learn, right? That's what the process is all about. Learning, trying different things, being fearless, being unapologetic, being, you know, just audacious with your painting and stop worrying about what other people might say or think. You've got to try what works for you. You don't let anybody else tell you how your art journey is supposed to be. Just don't do that. And here, he is just the cutest little mouse. I am loving this little mouse. Loving all of the little highlights. He is too cute. I think you might hear Dorian Gray. He's my little dove. He's back there cheering for us. Letting us know that he is with us 100%. Yes, Dorian Gray, I hear you, boy. I hear you. He is letting us know he is 100% in our corner, and he thinks we are amazing. You just got to love a bird like that. I've decided that I want to push this into the background a little bit more, this really bright leaf. So I'm going over it with a little bit of a darker orange. I think it's standing out too much. It's starting to compete with my mouse. I don't want any competition with my mouse. Mr. Whiskers is the star of this show, Mr. Twitchy Whiskers. And I do not want anything to distract from him where your eye wants to just go to, to that leaf or those background instead of going to my sweet little mouse. So that's why I'm adding a little bit darker colors to that background because they're a little too light. They're almost matching some of the lighter colors in the mouse. So I want them to be darker because I want my mouse to be what you look at, what you love and enjoy. And everything else is just window dressing. He's the star, the leaves and the background are the supporting actors. And that's how we wanna keep them. We don't want them trying to shine brighter than our little star. So that's why I'm coming back into that background and decided to darken it up just to push it back some and let my little mouse have the spotlight on him. So anytime you have a subject and you start noticing that the background is overtaking it, you can darken up the colors of the background. That will help push them back. You can put a like a pale, really light gray. What I mean by gray is like you can get a Payne's gray, mix it with a lot of water so that it's not really too dark and just paint a wash over the background to push it in the background. You could also use neutral tint. So that's a little tip for the backgrounds when they start getting a little bit too much in the limelight and you don't want them to be. So now let's see what we got going on here. I'm taking oop, my paint, my paintbrush got stuck on my tape. So we're gonna take this tape off. I always love that beautiful little white border that is around once you remove the tape. And somehow I got that tape stuck on really well. Have a little bit of time to get it off. So there you go. You have this sweet little fall mouse in his little bundle of leaves. And he is looking so cute, Mr. Whiskers. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will not miss a video. Thank you so much for wa watching. Please leave me a comment, subscribe. It helps my channel so much. Thanks.